First Peter 1 Peter 1.23 Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and bideth forever. That's why no matter what is going on in your life, you are born again of incorruptible seed. They don't care if it looks like it's against all odds. It's incorruptible. It's not going anywhere. You might go somewhere, but it's not going to go anywhere. Romans 4.18 in the Passion Translation. Against all odds, when it looked hopeless, it wasn't hopeless because God. I said it wasn't hopeless because God. But it looked Hopeless looks can be deceiving, but the word will never deceive you. Abraham believed the promise. He did what? He believed the promise and expected. That's how you know when you believe it. Expected God to fulfill it. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. We give you glory, honor, and praise in the house. And we thank you for what you've done and what you continue to do at Redemption Mobile. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. As these last days, we're in them, as they grow darker, the philosophy of this world and its ideolo ideology, ah, that's hard for a hillbilly. Ide ideological system. There we go. I got it out. Listen, grow stronger and more persuasive. The ideas of this world, the system that it has, it's growing stronger and more persuasive. Uh, just look all around you. But it says in the and it says it says in the New Testament in the last days there'll be a great falling away. People aren't running to righteousness and holiness anymore. So this world and its ideas, its philosophy, it's going stronger and more persuasive. You see it. People are buying in the goods that the enemy's selling. When living in the kingdom and living for the king, listen, in these days is really a living against all odds in this hostile world. Because they, the world, they won't let you get in if you don't blend in to fit in. Amen. Will you conform to this world? Will you go ahead and try to get in so you're just going to blend in? So you can fit in? Are you going to be conformed to this world? Or are you going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind by the word? Yes. Listen, and take a stand. For those taking notes, that's Romans 12 too. Will you take a stand? Is anybody standing for the king and his kingdom anymore? Like we said earlier, everybody's in, their, everybody's in so many different camps. And we can't come together for the king and his kingdom. I mean, you got even people divided in here that stand for their country more than they will their kingdom. Yeah. Yes. Thank God for this country. But as we said earlier, I'm born of incorruptible seed and my citizenship's in heaven. Yeah. This is my second dual, dual citizenship in this country. Yeah. See, the odds that are against us are. It's the, it's the ideas that this world proliferates. Hell, I got that word right, didn't I? How about that? <laughs> that, that just means that to increase greatly, to multiply. And these ideologies that are multiplying, they're multiplying all around us. And listen, and it's succeeding at it. It's succeeding at it. We've won over some of this stuff before, but it bears repeating right here. Nobody wants to keep you in, here in church for five, six hours at a time. That's not our intentions. It is his house. 
and whatever he would like to do. The Spirit has rule and reign in this place because this is the Lord's house. Amen? But the world has us so conditioned that you've got people that are experts that say, you can't have a church these days and keep them in there over an hour and a half. Now, wait a second. They drive an hour to the game. They wait an hour to get in. The game lasts in three and a half hours. And it's going to take you a good 45 minutes to get to your car and another 30 minutes before you get out on the road for your hour-long trip back home. Hmm, maybe I'm confused. I don't know. Well, wait a second. It, what about that movie that was three hours? We, we sit, sit in it. Amen, oh me. But yet they want to condition us. And, and, and we've got experts that are trying to tell the church instead of letting the head of the church tell the church what he wants to do. And they're buying into it. Why would they even say that? It's because they tell us now, you watch your TV. How often does it ever show one picture of one scene where it stays there for, you know, 10, 11 seconds? It doesn't. Whether it's movies, whether it's TV, whether it's ads that you see. Listen, an image, then an image. Like every few seconds, they're floating something else at you. They've even, listen, they've done that so much and so often. Listen, they have programmed the kids of this generation. They can't sit and focus. They want to put them on drugs and say, well, you can't focus. But yet the same world that says that is the same world that also puts them in a place where every time they pick up that phone, image after image after image after image after image. So their brain, listen, their brain is getting programmed. Their brain is getting taught that i got to have something in front of me, every, another image or another thing, and that's how they're getting trained and programmed. And yet the world will come in and say, why can't you sit and pay attention to your teacher standing up there teaching you? Amen. Put them on drugs. Make somebody else money, right? When they're the ones that's programming and training our kids. And now even adults, we, we're kind of buying into that, some of that too. I mean, when was the last time you went to a restaurant and you're sitting with your family or your wife and nobody got their phone out and you just got, talked to each other and looked at each other? Oh, you're getting conditioned. You've been persuaded. I'm not anti-technology. I got some technology up here. It's a blast. It can do things that used to. I mean, I'd have notebooks full of stuff up here. My library at home, I've got more at a click of my fingers than theologians a, a hundred years ago had in their whole library. Yeah. 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 I'm not anti-technology, but this world is, trans is conforming us to it. So where do you stand? Do do you know if you're even standing? It's awful quiet in here. Not taking a stand is by default not standing. When war is upon you, you're at war whether you want to fight or not. And you can either be a conqueror or a casualty. And if you conform, you'll be a casualty. Because the enemy wants to eat your lunch and pop the bag. He don't like you. Do your friends, do your family, do your co-workers, do they know that you're a child of the king? It's amazing how the world come out of the closet and the church started going in it. I said it. I don't want them to know that I praise the most high God. I'll get a hard time. I might even get fired. Oh, you just, 
you know, I hope you need to check yourself because you know what? That ain't my God. He's more than able. He's, I said he's more than able. More than able to give you much more than any kind of man on earth. He can arrange things. You won't never lose anything that God won't give you something greater for taking a stand for him and his namesake. And who cares about them hater friends anyways? God will give you a whole family of friends that, listen, that really will when they look at you and say, ride or die, baby, they really going to do it. Right. Instead of, it's you and me, man. That's right, bro. To the end. <laughs> Woo! I didn't do it. We got you on tape. Oh, okay. Maybe I didn't do it. I put guilty. Six months, seven months, eight months. Where are they at? They're coming to see you every day. They're hanging out with you, giving you Christmas presents. Celebrating your birthday, remembering it. See, God will put you into a family. Who cares? He loves you. That when you fall down, they won't leave you down. They'll help pick you back up. And when you start, but when you start straying a little bit, David, hey, come on now. Let's get back on. Let's get back on. You can't, you can't outgive God. The world stuff's phony and fake. It's like this beautiful looking present that's just like awesome until you open it up and you're like, there's nothing in it. Yeah, but what a box. Yeah, you got a great box. I'll give you that. The, the ribbon, the bow, and everything is off the chain, man. But did you forgot to put something in it? No, there's nothing in it. We just, we just promote the box. <laughs> That's the world for you. You ain't got no substance. It ain't got nothing. Do they know that you're a child of the king? Well, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. And for those taking notes, that's Joshua 24, 15. But how about you and yours? Who are you serving? Which house? Is your house going to serve the Lord? Because what of serving the Lord means persecution. You're going to serve him anyway? When they say, you, you, better, you better pipe down now. We don't want to hear that name, Jesus. Isn't that what they did to the apostles? Look, y'all can come out here and say what you want to. Just don't, just don't use that name. Oh, the world don't care if you use God. The world has plenty of different gods out there. That's just the generic version. You get on national TV and say something about God real quick and go on. Ain't nobody going to care. Say Jesus one time and see what happens. Amen. So... What if it means persecution? Well, what if serving the Lord means segregation? They don't want to eat with you no more. Phone quit ringing on the weekend. Everybody posted how they had a good time at the event, and you didn't even know about it. So serving the Lord could mean persecution. It could mean segregation. It can mean isolation. And it definitely will bring up tribulation. But what if serving that follows you around? Are you willing? Are you counting the costs? Because persecution, segregation, isolation, and tribulation will follow you around like the dust that encompasses and envelops pig pen. If y'all remember the Charlie Brown series, Peanuts. Remember the dude that walks around and is like everywhere he walks, that's just, 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 he can't get away from it. <laughs> what if all those follow you around because you're serving the Lord? Are you going to? I said it last week and I'll say it this week. The Lord may not live up to your expectations, but he'll always live up to his word. 
Will you still follow him? Now, his promises are true in, uh, in, in Christ Jesus, yes and amen. But what if you gave and you, and you didn't get a harvest? What if you made yourself friendly but you didn't get friends? What if the judge did pass sentence? What if the doctors didn't tell you what you wanted to hear? How much are we serving the Lord because of the Lord as opposed to he's a genie in the bottle that if we rub him the right way, he'll pop out and give us his three wishes? Just grab that word. Oh, today I wish this. This is what it reads. What if you got nothing in return? Would you still serve him? Would you still take the isolation, persecution, segregation, tribulation? Because see, that breaks down to love, doesn't it? Because you know what? If you're a parent here and you have a kid... They could totally screw everything up in their life. But guess who you still love? You ain't going to get nothing in return for them. Matter of fact, you're planning your retirement now, and they ain't going to help out with nothing because they might be living on the street. I don't know. But you're still going to love them. See, that's love. That's unconditional love. You're not expecting anything in return. I wonder how many people just, they just don't love God when they get mad at God over something. It's like, are you loving him because you love him? Or you, you were just, gimme, gimme, my name is Jimmy. And all of a sudden when the store wasn't open to get you candy, now we got a problem. Kind of like a kid. I want a cookie. You always got cookies. Where did you take a cookie at, mama? We ain't got no more cookies. <laughs> I'm really wondering. God had to check me on that years ago. Before I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I did everything just because I really loved Him. And then I found out there's perks, there's a system, there's sowing and reaping. And all of a sudden, did I really give to give or did I now start starting to give to get? Did I love Him because of what I can get from Him? Listen, you can't give him anything back, but he still loves you. That's, that's real love. You can't do nothing for him. He can't increase and he can't decrease. Amen. That's how much he loves us. And all he wants us to do is just love him back. So I'm here to tell you that even against all odds, against the world's system of philosophy, that the Lord will make a way for you. Yeah, well, I hear what you're saying, Pastor. You can already tell by the tone that this ain't going to go good. But I got so many problems, it isn't just against all odds for me. I have 0% chance. Well, it sounds like you need a miracle. Good news. Good news. He's still in the miracle working business. We might deal in against all odds. He don't deal in odds. He calls things that be not as though they were. So if you've got problems, you say, well, here we go. Because a consistent theme, an attribute that always, listen, precedes, that means beforehand, that precedes and procreates or gives birth to miracles. Listen, from Genesis to Revelation, the thing that precedes miracles from Genesis to Revelation is this. 
What's something they all got in common that precedes a miracle? A problem. Somebody's going to get one. And if you don't have a problem, then you won't have a miracle. But if you don't need a miracle, if, 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 you don't, if you don't want a miracle and you don't have a problem, that's okay. It ain't, you, you don't have to bother with it. You won't get no miracle. I don't have any problems, Pastor. With, you won't get any miracles and you won't, you won't be bothered with it. None at all. But if you've got problems, he's got miracles. If you do have a problem, you're autom- listen, you automatically qualify for a miracle. And the bigger the problem, the bigger the miracle. So you're not ever going to outdo God. Zero percent chance. God works with zero all the time. Zero, God will take a zero and just knock it over. God knows how to take a zero and give you another zero and put a one in front of it. He'll give you 100%. But despite what the world does to you, listen, rest assured that if the word of the Lord is rooted in you and acted upon through you, it's a cooperation. We're going to talk about that in a second. Things of God just don't fall on you like a seizure. That's what we think a lot of times. Like going back to the genie in the bottle thing. We've been brainwashed by the world. Or listen, or we've sat in religion too long. Well, right straight from the pulpit too. Well, if it be thou we. Well, is it or not? Well, we don't know. The Lord works in mysterious ways. Know the book of Ephesians. Listen, it's a commandment to know the will of God. And he doesn't work in mysterious ways. He works according to his word. Well, brother, I don't know. It may be, it may not, we don't know. We'll just pray to the good Lord. No, you should have already been praying to the Lord for one thing, and the Holy Spirit will download His Word into you, and that's what you speak. And it's rooted in you. If you're still trying to, well, I don't know, I'll quote it a million times, I'm not sure. We'll try it. It's got to be in you. I mean, it has got to be in you. There's no trying. Hallelujah. I don't see Andrew. Where's Andrew at? Ricky, could you get a chair for me real quick? Thank you, sir. Yeah. There we go. That'll work. All right, thank you. Can everybody see this? A bit out here. Okay. Yeah, we got props now. That's the world. Or that's the word. Isn't it amazing how the things of the world will just swallow hook, line, and sinker? And even though God might have a yes, if the world says no, we will buy into it. And God has to, listen, God has to get us out from the no to get to the yes. Why is it so hard to get us from what the world says to what the word says? It's a struggle. 
But yet we don't struggle with things in the world. All God wants us to do is trust him. But here's what we'll do with the world and our feelings and emotions. <sighs> yeah, I'm setting you up. Now, here's what we do with the word. I don't know if that'll hold me or not. Uh, that looks kind of new, but you never know. Is anybody else sitting in it? I'm not sure. Maybe. I don't know. Man, I remember falling down one time in that chair, and that hurt. Man, I was laid up for a week. I don't know. It would feel nice to sit down, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> hey, Pastor, is this chair okay? <laughs> oh, so you and the leadership do pray over them before every service on Sunday? That's awesome. Hey, that's great. But uh, just one more question Have you sat in it before? Just wanting to know. All right. God bless you too, Pastor. Okay. I ain't as young as I used to be. Well, that kind of worked, I guess, I think. I didn't feel anything. Thank you, Ricky. Can we get the word of the Lord rooted in us and then act upon it and just take it as simply we, re we read it, we'll meditate on it, we'll get it from our head down into our heart, we'll root it in there, keep meditating on it, and it starts producing. And, when that, and then when that part comes up, we just sit down in it. That's all we do. See, the Lord will make a way for you. His word will not return, return void, even against all odds. So whose report will you believe? Throw so Isaiah 51, I'm, excuse me, Isaiah 53, 1 up there. Because you see, it's, everybody wants the, the second part. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? I need the arm of the Lord. That means his power, his strength, his might. We're praying for the arm of the Lord to be revealed. But the arm of the world, the arm of the Lord is not revealed until you believe the report. The answer to the second one question is from the first one. Who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The arm of the Lord is revealed to those who have believed the report. Amen. Hallelujah. Your father is for you. Are you for him? He loves you. Do, do you love him? Oh, it gets real, real. See, everybody wanted Jesus to be here. I feel like preaching this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care if you stare back at me all day long. I'm going to preach this right here. See, everybody wanted to come out and be around Jesus. They didn't have a problem with Jesus. We love Jesus. Everybody comes in droves for Jesus because when I'm around Jesus, look at that. He's feeding everybody. Hallelujah. Let me stick my plate out too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you. Hey, look at all the healing lines going on. They're just lining up, look at them. Pop, 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 like popcorn. People getting up out of beds and everything, walking again. We love Jesus. We love Jesus. How? We love Jesus. And then one day, Jesus stood up and said, love me back. 
eat my flesh and drink my blood. In other words, love me back. And all of a sudden, the masses went away. We were all for Jesus until Jesus required something in return. Why do we want to love Jesus until Jesus says, love me back? I don't know if you love me, he said, keep my commandments. Hallelujah to his name. We need to partner with God. He wants to do a miracle with you. But you need to partner with him. He can do a miracle even against all odds. We're going to go through these kind of quick, but Genesis 18, 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? That's what he was saying to them. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Numbers eleven twenty three. 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? Or is grown short. In other words, is, is the light bulbs dimming, dimming in heaven? Oh, I can't help you today. I got low blood sugar. I'm just not active today. <laughs> Jeremiah thirty-two twenty-seven. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible. It's against all odds. But with God all things are possible. Luke 1, 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Ephesians 3, 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. Oh, wait a minute. That's not the end of that verse. Well, look at that. You'd think there was a period there every time I heard it preached. But looky there. There's something else. Let's read on. Let's read on. Hallelujah. According to. In other words, everything that you just read about. There's a stipulation. Everything is based on this. The exceedingly abundantly is based on the power that works in us. How many scriptures did I just read where God was saying, I can do anything. God's waiting. I mean, there's, there's a lot more than that. I'm just giving you a sample. When are we going to set that right down and we're just going to, Because when you can do that, you can have the exceedingly and abundantly. Amen. He says in John, amen, I'm throwing him for a loop in the back. I got to hit this. In John 15, thank you, Holy Spirit. John 15, 7. See, this is another one of these verses like the exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think, and then we start. Bruh. But that only works according to the power that works in us. Because nothing's, nothing's holding him up on his end. See, he's like Alabama power. It's always on. If you're plugging it into the wall and it ain't working, you might not have paid your bill. There's nothing wrong with the equipment and there's nothing wrong with the power source, but are you plugged in? 
according to the power that works in us. It's another one of those verses. Ye shall ask whatever you will and it shall be done unto you. Hallelujah. Preacher, I'm getting up. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a dance. I'm going to just spin myself around. Hallelujah. That's the word of God. You said it. You sure did. Ask whatever I have and it'll be done for me. That's what you said, Jesus. I got red letters. Well, wait a second. Let's go above that a little bit. See, usually the best revelations are usually a verse or two after what we hoop up about. If a man... No, no, go back, go back. Verse 7, I'll just read it. It says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you could put a word then there, because that's what it's meaning. It's not there, so don't be any like doctrinal dans out there. And you're adding and taking away. You're going to burn in hell. That's what it's insinuating here. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Amen. What are you trying to say, Pastor? You're not just sitting down in the seat. You don't trust it yet. Hallelujah. He's willing. He is. He's for you. His, pro his promises are for you, not for him. He don't need anything. It's for us. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's your perspective on it. How are you perceiving it? Because how you perceive it is how you're going to receive it. Yes, yes. Do you read the Word of God and you see restriction? Or do you see protection? Hallelujah. God is for you. But are you for Him? Are you not working? Are you working anything in you? Because God can overcome any adversity. Any obstacle. He can overcome any problem. But are you partnering? And are you cooperating with him, even if it's against all odds? Jesus didn't, I'm going to make you think this morning, hallelujah. Jesus didn't need five loaves and two fish to feed 5,000 people, but he used partnership. Even the devil knew it. Hey, you can just tear these stones and make them into bread. Devil knew he could. And why did you even Jesus say himself? He said, I could raise up stone, I could raise these up these stones up to be children of Abraham. He didn't need the five loaves and two fish to feed five thousand. But he used partnership. Hallelujah. Somebody going to get something out of this this morning. Jesus didn't need water and the water pots of stone to produce wine. But he used partnership. Jesus, we need to turn. We need some wine here. Y'all got water to pour into that? No. Man, I'm sorry. That's the formula. I can't help you out. Matter of fact, in one translation of feeding the 5,000, Jesus, they come to Jesus uh, telling them, you know, everybody's hungry out here. You know, what are we going to do? And, and Jesus, they said he already knew in his heart what he was going to do. And you know what Jesus looked at them and said? You feed them. Isn't that what we were talking about earlier? You love Jesus until Jesus wants you to love him back. You can do it, Jesus. Feed him, Jesus. Feed him. 
feed them, Jesus. Yeah, everybody, come on. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You feed them. What? Man, don't put that responsibility and pressure on me. I ain't Jesus. You're Jesus. But yet, he still uses his body to accomplish his will in this world today. Jesus is, I know he's made guest appearances at different places and stuff, but for the most part, he's going to use you and me. When we go pray for people, they need something, Lord. You pray for them. They're hungry, Lord. You feed them. See, when you start getting kingdom, I ain't got. What do you have? Partner with me. Because it's not all about making your wallet fat. I'm wanting you to go out and do the work of the ministry. Because your apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist is equipping you for the work of the ministry. They're a gift to you. What have you done with my gift? What are you doing with my word? You feed them. Jesus didn't need anybody to roll away the stone in order to raise Lazarus from the dead. Because he did that when he popped out of the grave. He did all that by himself, didn't he? He didn't have anybody on the side. Look, man, let me tell you something. They're going to hang me in three days on a cross. I'm going to die. Look, Jesus, come here. That's that here. <clears throat> this is a good payment. Now, in three days after I die, why don't you roll the stone away for me so I can get out? He didn't need anybody to roll away a stone in order to raise Lazarus from the dead. Nor did he need anyone to loose him from the grave clothes. But he used partnership. Amen. Are you sensing the theme here? Thou who wants Jesus to treat you like you're still five years old and mommy time is you. <laughs> Baby, I'm going to teach you how to tie your shoe. And then you can go help somebody else learn how to tie their shoe. Yeah. Baby, I'm going to teach you how to operate in kingdom finances because you, 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 you got more love than offering, but eventually you work with me, you'll have just as much love in your, just as much offering as in your love. And then you help somebody else get on track. Show them what I showed you in my word. Well, that's impossible. The doctor says it's just impossible, and the x-rays prove it. And then you got into his word, and he did a miracle in you, and there was partnership. Now he says, you go out. Tell them your testimony. Let them know what I am willing and able to do. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't need Peter to cast the net on the other side in order to send an abundance of fish. You know, Peter, I want you to know, don't cast it on the other side. I'm going to make it hard on me today. Let me see. I haven't exercised my creative God Almighty power in a while. See, now, it would be easy on this side of the boat, Peter. But you see, I'm wanting to get a little bit of a workout in today. So watch, watch this. Really? Like he really needed Peter to do it on the other side of the boat, descend an abundance of fishes, but he used partnership. And Jesus didn't mean, need, need the man born blind to go wash his eyes in the pool of Siloam. But he used partnership. So against all odds, as you stand to your feet and the music starts playing, against all odds, Odds, you need to partner with your provider. 
Well, how come God ain't done nothing? What have you done? Are you partnering with Him? Remember, you want it, you want it given back unto you, but you don't want to give. But He said you got to give, and it shall be given unto you. We want the exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, but what kind of power is working in you? We want to ask anything in His name and it be done, but do we want to abide in Him and His words abide in us? Are we using partnership and cooperation? Because He wants to more than you want Him to. But He's not, listen, you can't do His part, but He's not going to do yours. Are you cooperating and partnering with God? Or do you take his word and you just go around it? I don't know. I mean, you know what statistics say? There was 10 people that died in the United States last year. I heard that sit down in a chair and it broke on them. I don't know if that will hold me up or not. I don't want to be a statistic, Pastor. But yet with the world, we'll just sit right down in anything and not even examine it. Against all odds, you need to partner with your provider. And he will produce the provision that solves your problem. Even against all odds.